Uh, does anyone have any questions about the session before we start? Excellent. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Doug Rox McQueen, and I am going to talk to you about yourselves, archaeologists. Um, so I gather a lot of statistics on what we do, how we do it, how much we get paid, stuff like that. So that is this presentation. Some of you might be familiar with this. Uh, the American Archaeologist came out, well, now, one, two, happened about 21 years ago, uh, 1994. Large survey of archaeologists in the Americas, <coughs> primarily North America, it's done by the SAA, gathered all sorts of detail. Um, we've been using it pretty much since then, told us ages, told us how much we made, told us what sort of professions we were in, what we did, lots of information. Since then, lots of other countries have copied this. Um, so on your guys' left is uh, basically a similar survey done in Australia. So they've been doing that for, since the 1990s, gathering data every couple of years, finding out how many archaeologists work in Australia, where they work, what they do, how much they make. Um, on your right is Japan. So you can kind of see um, archaeology in Japan. That's how much money was spent, how many archaeologists there are. Um, it hasn't been going well there since 1997. Um, but other countries have been doing these sort of uh, statistical gathering surveys. All of Europe, well, almost all of Europe is now doing it. So it's now hit a continent-wide uh, project. So there's Discovering the Archaeologists of Europe that ran 19, uh, 2007, 2008, and recently 2012 to 2014. So most of the countries in Europe now have data you can now compare similar questions across all these different countries. You can look at how archaeologists working in the Czech Republic compared to archaeologists working in the UK. Lots of data, finding out all sorts of stuff. And we haven't done anything. We started this 20 years ago and haven't done a single thing since then. So we know very little about archaeologists uh, working in the, well, all of the Americas. I'm primarily going to focus on the United States for this presentation. Uh, but we basically know almost nothing except what was gathered 20 years ago. But there are different sources out there, there are different statistics, there's different data that we can pull together and get a rough idea of these different numbers. It's not a single survey, but you can do it. So right here is how many archaeologists we think work in the United States currently. Um, it's probably about 1,600 people who work for universities. And when I say work, I mean academic as opposed to, let's say, a CRM company attached to a university which got put into the CRM private sector. Um, states probably employ around 850 archaeologists. Federal, we actually know down to the person. It's 1,550. Um, and that changes because they have temporary seasonal employment. But <clears throat> it's roughly around 1,200 permanent employees, 300 some temporary employees by the federal government. And that's how many, and these are coming from different sources. Um, academics was a hand count, where I went around to every university website and counted up everyone who did archaeology. Federal comes from FedScope. Um, the states, several people have done different estimates. And then um, Ashel did sort of an estimate in 2008 of how many CRM archaeologists there are. Of course, we had a recession since then. Um, but in some parts of the country, it's gone back up. It's hard to tell. Um, I'll talk about maybe getting these numbers better soon. Pay. We've done a bunch of different small surveys over the years. Um, different uh, things. The Grapevine was a newsletter. They did surveys. Uh, the Underground was another newsletter that did surveys. ARCA has done some surveys over the years. Um, and you can look at shovel bums and um, archaeology field work, which are the lines, and sort of estimate out how much people are making. And most of them sort of cluster around the same thing. This is basically the red is your field technicians, and then for other people, sort of a senior field technician or crew chief, depending on what part of the country you work in and what company you work for and how they label it. We can do a very similar thing uh, for senior. So project managers, uh, which would be sort of your middle manager, again, depending on your terminology, and your senior managers. Again, a bunch of different um, sort of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, surveys have been completed over the years. 
Most people at the very top of CRM archaeology are probably making around $30, $31 an hour. Um, that was about a couple of years ago, so it might be up to $32, $33. Uh, looking at job efforts is not as accurate. It tends to underestimate how much people make. Um, but you can kind of see the different amounts. And back to, uh, these are averages. Uh, so most, on average, uh, field techs are probably making around 14 um, at this point. Federal wages, you can go to FedScope. Uh, I highly recommend it if you want to learn about uh, what people make and where they work in the federal, for the federal government in archaeology. Um, this combines both archaeologists and the sort of generically named um, social science technician, uh, which happens to be mainly archaeologists. And you can kind of see most people working for the federal government make at least 30000 or more a year. Um, some make quite a bit. Going back to looking at job adverts, um, this has been kind of well known, but now there's some data out there to point to this. You make more money in the West. So um, if, you, if you have the chance to work and you prefer a little bit more money, it goes a little further, except in California, um, the West is probably the place to be. Uh, you'll make on average a dollar or two more an hour um, in the Western United States than you will in the Eastern United States. Um, and that includes places like New York which is incredibly expensive, um, but you still make the same wages as the surrounding areas. This is sort of an estimate of how many archaeology degrees we've been put, putting out over the last you know, couple of decades. There's two data sources. One comes from the American Anthropology Association, and one comes from the federal government, which is the National Science Foundation, and they're a big uh, agency for higher education statistics. Uh, you'll kind of notice the blue one is the AAA. AA. I think that's overestimated because they take Canadian schools into that account, and so it pushes up a little bit. Um, but you can kind of see that we're now putting out several thousand people every year with a BA in archaeology. Most people, it's anthropology with concentration in archaeology. Um, there's very few actually archaeology degrees, but we all know what we're talking about. Um, and we're actually putting out several hundred PhDs and several hundred MAs or MSCs, depending on how it's labeled. Uh, this is not really that important. Uh, this is just sort of how those numbers are gathered. There's been tons of surveys over the years looking at all of anthropology. Um, you can basically figure out, you know, archaeology makes up about 25% of jobs for academics, about 30% of PhDs. We make up a much higher percentage of anthropology masters and a much lower percentage, probably around 20% of BAs and so forth. Um, this is different numbers. That's how I estimate those data uh, back here. This is all anthropology, but converted off of those numbers. So 20% of anthropology degrees gets us an estimated number of archaeology degrees. And since the first PhD in 1894 given out at Harvard, uh, this is the estimated number of PhDs that we've probably given out uh, with the concentration in archaeology in that time. Uh, masters, BAs, other degrees, which are sort of your two-year degrees. Uh, there's not a lot of those. Interesting thing, uh, if you go back, you'll notice the trend is upward. Um, that means that we've given out roughly half of all BAs since 1996. So half of everyone who's ever got a BA in archaeology got it since 1996. Half of all PhDs and MAs have been given out since about 1992. So uh, more people have a degree in archaeology now than there have ever been um, in the past and are alive now. Um, also, I love this, archaeology is anthropology, or it is nothing. Uh, but we tend to be a little more interdisciplinary than that. Uh, we also have degrees in cultural resource management, which is starting to pick up. Though, if you talk to Tom Kane, archaeology is not cultural resource management. Um, I, I have to agree with that, but there is some overlap, and the same with the classics as well. So we do get some uh, degrees outside of anthropology, not many. Um, this is only since 2003, once I pulled the data out. Uh, but you do get a couple here and there, several hundred um, in the classics each year. For undergraduate. Um, this sort of gives you a, an idea of the distribution of basically academics working um, 
in archaeology throughout the U.S. So I've just shown you that we have several thousand people with PhDs. Um, many of them believe that they will be going on to a job in academia. Um, this is sort of a breakdown of the years in which they got their PhD and we're currently working in 2012. When you compare the number of PhDs to the number of jobs that are available, um, you pretty much have a, about an 18% chance of, with an archaeology PhD of getting a uh, job in archaeology working in academia and that's tenure tra track. Uh, there are many more adjunct uh, jobs. Uh, which actually is worse than your chance of dying of cancer. Uh, so you have a better chance of dying of cancer than you do of getting a tenure track job. Um, that those numbers are a bit off in that it includes all assistant professors and I'm not sure how many people actually have successfully get tenure. Um, your chances might be slightly better of getting a tenure track job, but probably worse of actually getting tenure than getting cancer. Um, which sort of brings me to the point of why we need these statistics. Uh, I think there's probably quite a few programs that kind of need to rethink how they're training our future PhDs. Possibly when you get a degree, you might, you know, need um, a monogram or a, uh, <laughs> a colon check as well, because um, your chances of dying of cancer are much better. Uh, sort of round this out, uh, this is sort of different studies, so uh, we've done a couple of surveys over the years and they've gathered data on basically male and female archaeologists and we're kind of getting to the part where we're ending, we're getting about parity between men and women uh, coming up in archaeology and we haven't seen such a leaky pipeline as there used to be. Um, the only unfortunate part is now there's about 60% of undergraduates are female so those numbers should actually be much higher for women. Um, but we are starting to see basically and it would be great if we had a survey that could tell us exactly what these numbers are, but we are starting to see men and women equal out in working in archaeology um, coming up in the newest generation. Which brings me to, uh, hopefully in the next year or two or three, we will have this data. Um, the SAAs are putting together Discovering the Archaeologists of America, and so that is the Americas actually. Um, it's supposed to be north and south possibly happening sometime next year. Uh, it's been delayed a little bit, but soon we'll actually be able to tell most of this data. Uh, we'll be able to confirm it, look at it, and have a much better idea of what's going on with archaeology instead of sort of these numbers that I've grabbed from different places and put into this hodgepodge presentation. Uh, so ideally we'll have that. And potentially we might be looking at discovering the archaeologists of the world at some point. Um, connecting up with the European one. Uh, this is a pipeline that went through Chad and Cameroon when they realized that there was only three archaeologists in one country and one in another. It's very easy to count, but uh, archaeology is going international. Most countries are now having laws, and so we might at some point actually be able to line up all these different data sets and be able to talk about archaeologists everywhere. That's in my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>